Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us this evening. Just Hi making there. sure everybody can hear me on the panel. If you can all just confirm you can hear me. Some people are here to, um, to support the Manor Park webinar. That will be Peter and Hannah and myself. And the officers that will be running the webinar are Paul, Paul, <laughs> James, Howard and Mark. I will introduce everybody individually, but I just wanted to um, let everybody know that some people's videos will be off and that's because they're here to support within the background. So initially, I'd like to say welcome to you all. Thank you for attending. And I'm going to hand over to Howard and he'll introduce the webinar to us. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm Howard Wollaston. I am a West Berkshire Council councillor, uh, ward member for Lambourne, and I am executive policy holder for housing leisure and culture. I just want to kick this off by saying that and stressing this is an initial consultation. The intention is to get people's views. It's specifically not a planning application. Uh, and we were mindful of the fact, obviously, of keeping costs down for the benefit of council taxpayers. So a lot of the, the detail work has not been undertaken as yet until we've gauged your views. Um, so some of the questions that have been asked, uh, I'm afraid we won't be able to answer straight away. Um, but we will do our very best. And we've had 50 questions submitted by mainly three people, although I'm very conscious that one or two of those are uh, bringing together a number of questions from different people. Um, where possible, these questions will be specifically answered on the West Berkshire uh, website by next Monday. Uh, and in the meantime, we're going to go through three or four themes of the questions that have been asked, and we'll go from there. Madden. Thank you, Howard. Um, if we can go over to our officers to introduce himself, we'll start with Paul Hendry. I am Paul Hendry, Countryside Manager at West Berkshire Council. I've got responsibility for the open spaces, parks and countryside in the district. And um, uh, as well as uh, wildlife and conservation, I've also got sport and recreation as part of my responsibilities. Thank you, Paul. And Paul Martindale. Hello, uh, I'm Paul Martindale. Uh, I'm Head of Sport and Leisure Services for West Berkshire Council, and I've been responsible for conducting the review of the playing pitch strategy and looking at demand and supply for all the field sports and also the leisure strategy. Thank you. Jim, are you able to turn your camera on and introduce yourself? Okay. Can you hear me? We can hear you. All if right there's an then. issue with the camera, that's I'll, not a problem. I've also got an issue with the camera. Yeah, with uh, Jim Sweeting, Sport and Leisure Manager, and working with Paul Martindale and on a number of projects in the district at the moment. Thank you. And if we go over to our colleagues, so if I start with James. Good evening, everybody. Uh, yes, James Podesta. I work for STRI, which is a, a consultancy. We're specialists in the design of sports playing fields and construction of sports playing fields. And we're working with, obviously, West Berkshire and all the colleagues we have here on the uh, call this evening. Thank you. And Mark? Hey everyone. Mark Murphy here, and I am a design consultant with STRI. That's brilliant. Thank you very much for that. So... As Howard alluded to earlier, we, we have managed to sort of collate the um, questions into themes. Hannah is going to place the questions in the chat so everybody's very aware of all the, the questions that have been asked. Um, we will make sure that there's a thorough answer for all of them. But by taking the essence of those questions and breaking them down, we feel we can answer most of the questions by talking as a themed um, subject. So the first one is about demand on the site and we're going to move over to Paul and Jim to talk about that. These, um, the sections of the demand theme are evidence of demand, consideration of the site, the size of the pitch and the usage, concerns about scope creep, the um, scope creep, sorry, the views of Sport England, playing times and toilets. So I'm going to move over now to Paul, if we can start to discuss those themes and we'll try and add the questions into the chat that the, the theme relates to. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank, thank you, Amanda. Um, so one of the things that we have been undertaking over the last few months is a sort of detailed consultation with all of the football clubs uh, and also rugby clubs, hockey clubs, cricket clubs um, that are uh, existing within West Berkshire. Uh, and that is a sort of demand and supply analysis um, to help us determine the number of pitches and the quality of pitches that we need across West Berkshire. 
And this was this was initially done in, in 2018. And obviously with the post-COVID environment, we wanted to refresh that data to get a sense of um, you know, what demand was like in the post-COVID environment. So what I'm able to relate to you now is some of the statistics that underpin that and then how that's impacting on our approach to Manor Park and the supply of uh, new pitches across West Berkshire. So, so to begin with, there was, a, there was a, a question which actually pointed to the data in our leisure strategy, which said, oh, looking at some of this particular public response, it seems that there's relatively modest demand for football. Um, and the reality was that that particular piece of public consultation, the leisure strategy, was generic and it went across um, the uh, public and the community of, of West Berkshire. Uh, and so it revealed a certain pattern of demand. The demand that we have uh, revealed in relation to the playing pitch strategy has involved much more detailed, granular assessment uh, of demand. And what I mean by that is we have worked with the FA, particularly Barks uh, and Buck Buckinghamshire FA, and that has involved having detailed discussions with all of the football clubs in the area, detailed surveys, and an assessment of the growth of teams and what they need going forward and what their aspirations are. So what that has revealed is that basically from 2018 to now in 2022, there's been a growth of uh, a growth from 344 teams in 2018 to 382 teams uh, within the West Berkshire area. And seven of those additional teams are actually women's teams. An issue that has emerged through that consultation is that because of the absence of pitches um, to meet that demand, there's been an increase in the number of teams that had to travel outside of West Berkshire to play their matches. So in 2018, we had a position of 22 teams playing, having to locate to pitches outside of West Berkshire, and that number at 2022 had risen to 59 teams. So the point of, of, of the playing pitch strategy is to try to actually increase the supply of pitches and to look for locations across West Berkshire where we can actually meet that demand. So Manor Park was identified as one particular site for a new adult pitch. And what I'd sort of just like to stress is that Manor Park isn't the only site that we are looking at across West Berkshire. The playing pitch strategy is incorporating an analysis of multiple sites across, across West Berkshire, um, including a, a remaster planning of Hennick Worthy site, uh, looking at Goosecroft playing, playing fields, looking at sites with, 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 with schools, et cetera, to also increase the number of artificial pitches. So Manor Park is one site uh, amongst many that we're looking at in terms of increasing supply. So in terms of Manor Park, why, why, was, it, why was it selected? Well, it's selected because it's near a, a highly densely populated area. There are 23 teams that are located within the, within the um, Newbury and Thatcham area. So it's a significant proportion uh, of, of demand that we need to meet. Manor Park, when, when we looked at Manor Park and, and the work that came in from James Podesta's team through an initial feasibility study revealed that we can get a full adult size pitch on there. Um, but in terms of the scope and, and what, what would eventually happen, it's possible that that site could be marked out for an adult pitch, but also there's significant demand for an increase in mini pitches for children aged seven and upwards, junior pitches, youth pitches. So eventually, you know, through the consultation process, we'll establish what specific type of uh, pitch and marking should go on there. So, so that's giving you a sort of an overview of the demand. And then I just want to go on a little bit to, in terms of scope. Um, and then go through the, the specifics that Amanda, Amanda highlighted. So the scope of this project is, is not to um, create a, a stadium. Uh, it's not to create um, any specific set of changing pavilion facilities. It's simply to supply uh, the equivalent of an adult grass pitch there, which as I said, could be marked out differently for, for sort of mini soccer or junior soccer. Um, and the only other provision that we'll be looking at on that site would be a, a small toilet block to support the matches and potentially an increase in the, in, in the car parking capacity. And that is the full extent of the scope uh, and it will not creep beyond that. In terms of the quality of the pitch, what's important is that the pitch can accommodate 
a standard that is for league football. So where, where the problems are lying across the community is that teams want to play in leagues and those leagues uh, have set standards. So, you know, the, the level of the pitch uh, needs to have a certain governing body compliance. And so that is what will determine the work, a, a significant proportion of work at Manor Park would be that level in that site, which is, it is undulating at the moment. Uh, in terms of hours of use, uh, and this is a really important point, I think, the hours of use um, on any grass pitch are limited. Um, it's not often realised, but a grass pitch, the advice is generally that six hours of usage per week is a maximum. And beyond that, if, if, if matches are played beyond that, effectively the pitch deteriorates and quickly becomes unusable. So that is a genuine standard that we're committing to, that we want the pitch to be high quality. And that would mean that the, the total usage is just six hours a week. The pattern of that demand is really about weekends. So, so principally teams need to be able to play their matches and those matches would take place principally between 10 a.m. and one o'clock. So no evening usage, you know, not unsocial hours, nothing early morning, it's between 10 and one. So what might be a probable pattern of use might be 10 till one on a Saturday, 10 till one on a Sunday. And that, that is it, you know, we would not be going beyond six hours at six, six hours of usage. Um, so in, ter in terms of sort of other sites, I've mentioned several, several, and you know, the, the other one that we looked at, which was sort of in reasonable proximity to um, uh, Manor Park and the Newbury area what was Calcott Linear Park. That's still on the table as, as a consideration, but really with the level of demand that we've got in terms of the increase of pitches, it isn't about one site or another, it's about an increase of overall provision. And so potentially, you know, multiple sites um, we're looking at to, to develop and, and expand. Uh, Sport England will, you know, be just looking in terms of meeting their requirements that this is a, a quality pitch to, to, to meet league standards and that's it. Um, and they have indicated, as I said, that it doesn't need to have floodlights, it doesn't need to have a pavilion, they just need the toilet block and a good quality pitch and they'd be fine with that. Um, and so one, for one final question that emerged really in terms of the impact on local housing. Um, there was a sort of an illusion that actually playing football um, has a sort of potential devaluation to property values. There is no evidence of that. And, and what, what we're actually talking about here is a site that would continue with its recreational uses, its casual recreational usage, dog walking, just enjoying, enjoying a walk out but just with potential six hours allocated for, for playing pitches in order to meet that demand that exists across the community. So, so that's a summary of demand, uh, Amanda, and um, I'll, I'll basically stop there. Thank you. Um, all of the questions that have been asked of us are being placed in the chat as we speak. And feel free to chat yourselves, attendees, that's absolutely fine. Hopefully everything that you're raising, we will cover this evening. If there's something at the end of the session that you think we absolutely haven't covered by the information we've provided, there is also a question and answer section where you can um, pop your hand up and ask it again. Um, I'm going to move on to concerns now. So some of the questions have raised issues such as the possibility of um, antisocial behaviour, perhaps more litter and the management of it, um, additional noise, car parking, biodiversity and flooding. So it's quite um, a, a rounded group of concerns. Um, can I ask which of the um, panel is best placed to answer that please? Amanda, I can take those those questions. Thank you. Uh, might, so I'll I'll pass over to Paul. Thank Amanda, you. Can, it might be better if I um, I take the questions as they were asked, uh, which relate to these, um, I, which will be submitted by the um, by those attending. If you want me to take them that way, is if that you would, are you happy if for you me would to do that? If you would prefer to, that's absolutely yeah. fine. Yes, please go ahead. And then I can I can I can round off by by picking up some of the um, the general questions as well. Okay. Okay. So, so the um, I the the uh, we were asked the question about the um, the position of the football pitch and the the, the playground, uh, and, and, and uh, which was a question which was submitted, uh, and we we know that we, there is a there's a playground to be uh, situated in the north part of the site, the northeast part of the site. Um, that doesn't that 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 
um, a playground will still exist on that site. All we'll have to do is is reposition it by um, reorientating the, the 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 playground and moving it back in order to accommodate in, in order to accommodate the pitch. Um, there was also a question, a, a concern raised about the, um, the 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 position of the oil pipeline. Now, the oil pipeline is something that that um, both Stry and officers have had discussions with the oil pipeline agency about. So that's been that's been factored into our discussions and our decisions on on, on this matter. So the um so that were this to 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 progress forward, there would need to be further conversations with the oil pipeline agency. But we're we're aware of of the restrictions around that that particular feature. Um, the other, um, I there was a, there is a question about um, construction costs. Um, I, I, I'm happy to deal with that. So the um, so so we have what we have in front of us is is, is an, an indicative cost uh, for this for this project. But actually, there is no worked up detail cost for the very reasons that Howard's um, stated at the outset. This is just a proposal. Um, it's a consultation exercise. Um, if it goes forward. And that's a matter for um, members to determine. If, the, if this goes forward to the next stage for, of a full uh, planning application, then the construction costs will have to be um, I, I, I determined from that at that stage, and will be better uh, informed at that point. Uh, and the the costs for um, uh, building and constructing this this pitch are um, they're, they're they're factored into the council's budget, so both capital capital and and revenue costs. Um, as regards operational matters, which 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 appear in the themes, Amanda, which you which you raised, um, the, the the there's a question about the toilets. Um, the toilets will only be open at the same for, to, to serve the the the, 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 um, the football pitch, and the use of the football pitch, um, and the, um, the 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 pitch maintenance and marking. Um, my estimation is about four thousand pounds a year based on our current contract costs for that. So the the costs on an annual basis to maintain a pitch at this site um, is fairly minimal. I, one of the themes that you've picked up, Amanda, um, I relates to um, I, the I, ecological aspects and, and biodiversity. biodiversity. So look, I, I, my, I, I wear two, two hats, as I, as, as I alluded to when, when, when I gave my introduction. I, I, I'm the countryside manager, and of course I have, a, um, I have an interest in um, the, uh, the conservation uh, value of all of our um, open spaces and parks and countryside. I wouldn't be proposing uh, this site um, as, a, as a potential site if I felt that there were um, significant impacts on the ecology. However, having said that, a preliminary ecological um, assessment has been carried out, um, and I were this this site to progress forward to the next stage, then there will be further ecological work carried out to determine um, uh, whether there are any significant or, or, or what the impacts are on on wildlife, and there may need to be some mitigation measures. I, I, ultimately, a mitigation strategy will be required by our planners. Um, and a minimum of a 10% enhancement is likely to be required by, um, by planning policy. A question about um, a public access and dogs, of course, um, and a pitch at this location does not prevent local people accessing the open space. The, it, there's, the, it's, it's an open space. It will always will be an open space. Um, it, just part of it will be marked out for, for, for football. Um, and that is only for those very fine hours on a Saturday and a Sunday, and between May and September each year. Um, that's what happens in all of our open spaces where there's football. We have we have single pitches on open spaces elsewhere in the district, and dog walkers and people use the, 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 these locations for 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 um, a quiet leisure and recreation uh, on an ongoing basis. Thank you, Paul. Uh, okay. One of the other questions that's arisen within that theme of concerns yeah. was the um, the litter bins. Of course. Do you have any more information on that? So, so litter on the site. I, you know, in my experience elsewhere, um, I, I football doesn't generate the, the, the use of the, 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 the pitch for football doesn't generate a significant amount of of litter, additional litter. Um, 
yes, you know, open spaces do gather litter. Um, I and and if need be, we will uplift our our, our, our um our litter regime to 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 reflect that. But I, but it's litter um on sports pitches does not come across my desk on a regular basis. It's not it's not, it's not a significant I, I, I complaint. Incidentally, uh, just picking up some of the other things, neither is car parking. Car parking and noise is not something that I get uh, across my desk on a regular basis. With, with on, where, where we have football pitches on uh, open uh, on, on open spaces, and there are there are at least two in the district, um, which are, are are almost completely surrounded by by houses. That's brilliant. Thank you, um, Paul. I know that you've got your hand up. I just want to say to our attendees. Um, if anyone has a question from anything being discussed, could, please can you put it in the question and answer session because it's been left in the chat. So if you have something that you want us to address that isn't within the questions already being asked that we hope we will um, answer for you this evening, please pop it into the question section because I think it might get lost along the stream otherwise. Um, Paul, I'm going to come to you. You've heard your hand yeah. up. I do apologise. Thanks. Thanks. I really just wanted to add a couple of points to what uh, Paul had said, um, and I've seen some of the questions, you know, coming through on the chat. So, so really, just to respond to that, and you know, issues about concerns about antisocial behaviour, and um, certainly, I think what the experience is of managing parks and open spaces is that the more well a space is used, the the less likely it is that it will be the subject of antisocial behaviour. It's much more quiet spaces, so. The use of football and bringing you know young people and families in to, to watch a game actually tends to reduce antisocial behaviour as a sort of general as a sort of general fact, really. Um, in, in terms of noise, I just wanted to say I can see that that's a concern for residents. And um, the one of the things that the FA um, is very keen to do, and I think you know a concern about noise is often about you know shouting or potentially hearing abusive language. There is a there is a policy. Um, called the respect policy, which um, is about not using any kind of foul or racist language during football matches. And that's a really important policy that's in place now. And I think there would be an expectation and, and Paul's team oversees the bookings that that policy is respected and that clubs who, any club that would come and use this facility would align to that. So there is a mechanism for controlling noise to a certain degree or anything. Obviously there'll be a, a residual noise from just the kicking of a ball and communication that would be on a playing pitch, but anything that is abusive can be actually curtailed and stopped by the, the application of that, that, that policy, the, the respect policy. And then the third thing is just, just to add to what Paul was saying about car parking. You know that the, when when teams play matches, there is a short window of arrivals for those matches. The matches are played and then teams go. So there isn't a continuation of transport to an area. It's a quick window of arrive, play the game, and go. And so there isn't a sort of higher level of increased noise through that transport. So I've I've done these kind of projects before, and it's just to sort of you know relay that it's it's a small window where people arrive uh, uh, and go. Um, so, so just to add to add, add to Paul's responses on that. Thank you, Paul. James. Thanks. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, support Paul Hendry's point actually about the the use of the football pitch and the, or the multiple use of the area, if you like. The level at which this pitch would be provided, constructed and provided, um, would not prevent anybody else from using that surface as well for other recreational activities. So there'd be no fencing or anything stopping people using the pitch when games were not in in um, in play as it were so i think it's just fair to say that the playground the football and the recreation are not mutually incompatible they can all they can all coexist if you like and there'd be no difference from exactly as it is at the moment except for providing for six hours of football a couple of times a week thank you for that okay um, i'm going to move on to the next theme um that's to do with the build process so it's back to yourself and your colleague mark i don't know who's going to start with that conversation um so what will be required moving forward? If you can just sort of give us an overview of how things would look. Yeah, um, well, I'll kick off and maybe, Mike, you can join in if there's anything in, in particular that you think I may have missed. But uh, in terms of the work that would need to be undertaken, um, for the level of provision we're looking at here, it's essentially a regrading exercise to make sure that there is a level um, platform available. And there may be some um, drainage that has to go in in order to make the uh, surface um, compatible with that six hours per per day sorry 
per week in terms of the usage. So there's, uh, in essence, not much more to it than that in terms of the uh, construction. The profile would need to be raised at one end of the site because we're aware, obviously, there is a, a gradient on the site. So there'd be import material to ensure that that was a level, uh, level surface to start with. And then it would be seeded, cultivated and grown in um, back to a sort of uh, football pitch stroke recreation area. And that's exactly the process that we followed. Uh, Mark, I don't know if there's anything you want to add uh, in terms of detail there. No, no, you pretty much covered it all. So that that'll be the general process in terms of uh, the, the construction process itself. The pitches we've already talked about would be constructed to a, what's known as a Sport England standard. Um, and that just dictates literally that it can be, um, it is well drained, it's level and it's usable for, for, for sport at that level. Thank you, James. That's really useful. Um, I'm going to go to Howard next. Howard, um, we've had some consultation um, points raised, whether the re results will be collated and reported, consideration of the planning, pre-application feedback, um, the review of the demand, and how we will actually decide things as a council. Could you give a consultation overview for us, please? Certainly. <clears throat> uh, clearly, we kicked off this consultation exercise. We extended it by a couple of weeks to, to meet concerns from residents. Uh, there will be a detailed response to all the questions raised, which as I mentioned earlier, will be uh, on the West Berkshire website on Monday, uh, where we can answer. I mean, some of them are clear we, we, uh, we can't answer at this stage because it's a very early point in the, in the process. Um, if we think that this is a, a, a something that can, can be taken forward, um, then we will then go through the process of um, going through detailed analysis and consultancy uh, with a view to a planning application being submitted, which clearly um, the general public will be able to object to if they wish to. Um, and that will go through the planning process of the, the West Berkshire Council. Um, I would just like to reinforce the fact that this is not just a one-off uh, playing pitch. It is part of the overall playing pitch strategy, as, as Paul Martin has pointed out. And there are multiple other sites that we've been looking at, including the use I've seen in the chat of um, school football pitches. Um, but we have a major demand issue on football pitches in West Berkshire, uh, as well as other uh, field sports as well, I would mention, like rugby and, and um, hockey and so forth. That's really helpful. Thank you. Um, we've covered our themes. We've tried to give you an overview of the themes of the type of questions that were asked and trying to give you an understanding of what's going through. Um, Paul, I, I know you've got your hand up. Did you want to discuss something that was just mentioned? It, I, it was, I was going to, to, to come back to a point, but we can do that further down the line if you want me to. OK, what I'd like to do now, there, there have been some questions popped into the question and answer session because of the, the um, information that's been received this evening. I just want to be very clear that all the questions, because there are so many of them, all the questions will be published. Please don't think that we if we if it looks like we've not covered something this evening, it's because we have a tight time frame and we want to make sure we get through as much as possible for you. But if we go into the question section now and see what's been asked, I don't know who will be the, the best person to answer this. So panelists, um, Councillor Richard Marsh has said this is a peaceful green idyll used by local residents that's used for walks, picnics, dog meetups and for children's games. Adding a football pitch and associated infrastructure will completely change the nature of the field. Yes, residents will still be able to access the edge of the field when football games are in play, but it won't have the sense of peace and tranquility that is available now. Um, would you like right. me to answer that? Yes, please. I, I, Paul also said, so, so perhaps Paul would, would, would add. Um, so look, my, my, my view on this is that um, um, as, as, as the parks uh, manager effectively is that if you look at the way that um, the, the general public have used um, open spaces since um, I, both during and after lockdown. Um, there is greater demands being placed on our open spaces. Um, I know that, that open space quite well. Um, in my view, it's underutilized because it's used by a very small section of the population, mostly dog walkers. There may be people in the, the, um, the surrounding community and, uh, and, 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 and elsewhere who, who would want to, to see and benefit from the fact that we've got sporting provision at that site. Um, so, so, so we can't see our open spaces just 
as quiet idyls, if you like. They, they, they have to cater for a much, much wider um, a spectrum of demand from the general public. And all of our public open spaces as we go forward um, will need to meet that, that demand. Um, it, it, that's, in my view, that's what, what the, the, the lockdown and post-COVID has, has taught us uh, in terms of the management of our open spaces. Thank you. Paul, did you want to come in with anything? Well, ju just one addition to that, really, is that um, I, I wouldn't want the public to get the perception that when the, there is or if there is a pitch that's marked out there, that they won't be able to walk across that during their normal recreational time. They will. It isn't, it isn't going to be an exclusive zone. And um, will the car park be open for residents to park and access if they have perhaps less abled resident could park up there? Will there be facility for that? It's not our intention. It's not our intention to close the car park. Okay, uh, and, 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 and I'd like to pick up an, an, an antisocial behaviour point in just a sec, if, if, if I've got time to do that. Um, let's go to James quickly. James. Yeah, it was a very quick point. I just wanted to to add to the conversation, really, that uh, the level of, of um, provision that we're, we're looking at uh, designing here is not sort of the elite level pitches. So it's not going to be a surface that can't be played on, can't be touched, can't be walked over, um, can't be interacted with. So it's absolutely in no way going to stop people being able to use that space outside of a football game. So you're literally talking about the vast majority of the time it being a recreational open space available for anybody to use. In a small portion of the week, it's going to be available for, for football games. Thank you. Um, Paul, could you just clarify whether it will be seasonal, whether it will be open in the summer for football or not? Or will it just be a winter seasonal activity? It, 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 so is it Paul Hendry or Paul Martindale? <laughs> Whichever you, you, Paul is you, best placed to answer that, you, you I feel I've got it covered. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so if you're talking about formal football, mm -hmm. the formal football season, um, I, I, I will be um, from uh, September time till May. So that's a, that's a formal football se uh, uh, season. Undoubtedly, there will be ad hoc uh, matches, um, I, but 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 my experience elsewhere with with with, with football pitches um, I, uh, out of out of the normal football season is that kit that they're used for kit, kids to, to 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 kick a ball about. And, and, and that's something we would want to, to, to encourage. Okay. Should I move on to the next question? Has anyone got anything else to add? I just wanted to pick up the antisocial behaviour because it's kind of linked to this. And I, I, I noticed a number of questions have come through the chat about antisocial behaviour. Um, I have, and, and people have asked, have, have the police been involved in this? Well, yes, I have had conversations with the, um, I, the police um, in the last week or so in preparation for, 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 for this, this, this webinar. And the, the police have no records of antisocial behaviour for this location, none. Um, and I, there's, there is a, an argument which, which, which was, was alluded to earlier, that the more that we use our open spaces for a positive purpose, and the more that people use it, the less likely there is uh, to be antisocial behaviour. Um, the, the police left me a very clear message to pass on. If people believe that there's antisocial behaviour at this site, if people believe there's drug taking, and that was part, that was one of the questions, if I understand, um, and it certainly came up in the chat, then they're certainly not being reported to the police, and they should be. Thank you. Um, there is something that kind of links into that. Um, one of the other questions it says, and I think it's specifically for you, Paul. It says, these car parts that you're aware of don't seem to be an issue. Are they within residential housing estates as this one would be? Do you have any other car parts that relate to that question? Um, so, so uh, yes, uh, is the answer to that. The, the, there's there's uh, the, the, the site called the Diamond Field at Greenham. Now, the Diamond Field at Greenham is in the middle of um, the, the Greenham estate. Um, we have football there. It has been there football there for a number of years, and uh, it's a very, very similar situation to to, to Manor Park. Um, uh, there isn't a, a car parking provision, but there is existing car parking along uh, close to the site. But car parking genuinely does not come across my desk as as, as being a, as being an issue. Um, and it's also worth saying, and it's probably something that James Fidesa might want to, to add to. Um, it's not my strength or my, 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 my area of expertise, but the planning, if it goes, if this goes to a planning application, then, it then we are going to require a transport access and travel plan, which will pick up some of the concerns about car parking, about um, I travel, I, I, about I, I vehicle movements at the site and about sustainability. 
Um, so, so again, this is one of these issues which will be dealt with further down the line. Yeah, just to very quickly uh, come in on that, yeah, that's exactly the case. If this site progresses towards a planning application, then it'll need a number of surveys and uh, other reports to be submitted with it. I see there's some uh, discussion about biodiversity as well. That's a similar issue. They would have to be dealt with formally through the planning application, at which point general public would get their um, opportunity to um, make any concerns known. And, of course, all those reports would be available for people to see and we'd have to justify the um, biodiversity net gain in terms of biodiversity. So there'd have to be a, a solution, um, a mitigation strategy. And similarly with transport, parking, access, travel to site and back, surveys and, and information would have to be provided that justified uh, the movements and everything there. So it would all be in the public domain and all be available for people to, to review and comment on. Thank but, you. Um, and, and something like this, which sorry, offers just... all these questions and answers, means that you get robust answers for all of it. But sorry, yes, carry on. I was just going to finish off on that. that I think that the, the point um, in terms of, of transport is really to focus on, on sustainability and the way that things are going these days is pushing people towards more sustainable modes of transport. Now, whilst I appreciate most people will still use a car, there will be the opportunity to take advantage of public transport and particularly cycling and walking so that I'm sure there'll be opportunities when looking at the site in future, if it goes to that stage, to provide those sorts of um, parking and access arrangements as well. Thank you. Apologies for the interruption. No. Um, Howard, can I come to you for this question, please? Um, I have a question. Is this a replacement pitch for Monks Lane Sports Hub, replacing the current Faraday Road football ground? It's part of the playing pitch strategy, but it also uh, does help with that issue as well. Thank you. OK, we have another question here from Councillor Richard Marsh, who says there must be over 100 school football pitches across West Berkshire that have associated infrastructure already. Most of these are vacant at the weekends. Why are we not being considered for use? Who would like that. to answer that? Yeah. We are looking at um, sites across West Berkshire. If there is something that we've missed, and as I said, we've, we've gone out extensively with our supply and demand analysis um, and we need to provide you know multiple uh, increase in grass pitches and astroturf pitches so, so part of that is working with those schools which have identified to us that they would be willing to um, look at the creation of an artificial grass pitch or, or a grass pitch so, so those consultations are in place and we are currently in dialogue and actually delivering I think um, an increase in supply of pitches with schools. Um, if there's any that feel that they want to contact me and say we also have uh, some space, um, that that discussion would be welcome. So, I mean, that that's I think the, the key message to get out. But we're looking at a, a partnership with any school that's willing to open up its uh, space, green space, to create a football pitch for, for matches at weekends. Thank you, Howard. You've got your hand up. Yeah, um, Paul and I both went to see a, a new 3G pitch that's been produced in the school near, near Purley on Thames about a month ago. It is a seriously impressive facility. Um, but the, um, the the person that's responsible, the bursar, whatever you want to call him, did stress the fact that whilst it could be used by a couple of teams, the, the demand from the school itself was so great, even at weekends, that it's not something that can necessarily be um, provided. Um, as Paul said, there's clearly a scope for us to look at other alternatives, but I don't think you just assume that the, the pitches at weekends at schools are not used because that's not the case. Thank you. OK, we have another question here. Um, Cold Ash Parish Council have been trying for four weeks to see the feasibility study that West Berkshire Council commissioned into the pitch at Manor Park. Why has it not been forthcoming? Well, I'll take that. Well, we are uh, about to distribute that and I think they'll receive that tomorrow. So. Apologies for the delay in that. I think there's been some annual leave, me included. Um, and so uh, I, I only arrived back recently, but they will receive that feasibility report. Thank you. Um, Nicola Johnson said, can the council justify the cost for levelling drainage car park amenities when we're being told that local authorities are struggling for funds for just six hours a week of sport? That's a maximum of two games. Right, I that one? Yes, absolutely. Uh, there's been an independent study produced recently looking at 304 councils across the country, of which uh, West Berkshire came out as being the, the eighth best financially run council. Uh, we have put in place already a budget for this, this pitch and other pitches, 
um, which are all included, and our council tax increase rates are at the very, very bottom of the level across the country. Um, so I think we're well placed. We're very well run council, uh, very prudent, financially well controlled, uh, and we can afford this. Thank you. Um, we have another question from Councillor Richard Marsh. Do you accept that the building of a toilet block is urbanising and likely to be a focus for antisocial behaviour when it's not in use? I can take that if you want me to. Um, Please, thank you. Yeah, I don't think we can assume that the 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 the, the, um, the uh, a, a presence of a, a closed toilet block out with the um the the, the football season is is likely to to bring about antisocial behaviour because there just isn't the current. Um, evidence to suggest that antisocial behaviour is a is, is a significant issue. Thank you. Um, Joe has mentioned in the um, question section that they believe that annual leave is not excusable and unless you're prepared to extend all the deadlines. All of these delays reduce the time that the community can be involved. Paul, would you like to come back with that? Um. <laughs> Uh, we we have extended the consultation period for three weeks, and and as I think Howard said, this is an initial consultation uh, period. Um, if if the uh, if the scheme goes ahead, there would be a full planning application uh, and a, another opportunity for uh, an extension uh, with public consultation. So um, I, I think this is you know almost the first round, and we're looking to get public reaction and really to explain. What this scheme was about and why Manor Park was considered, and um, you know, there's no secrets. Um, the, the 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 report will be distributed. Um, so apologies uh, if that's not arrived uh, to date, um, and it will. Uh, I don't know if we would consider further extension of, of the consultation because having extended it for three weeks, you know, we're looking, we're keen to sort of collect results and see where it leads us. But um, I'm happy to have discussion with the panel. Uh, and, and see what scope there is for that. Thank you. Um, we've got a comment from Ed. Can the feasibility study be uploaded to the West Berkshire Council website? Will it be uploaded? Can be, yeah. We okay, thank you. All right, and I have a final question, unless anyone else wants to put one into the question and answer section. Um, Councillor Richard March says, we understand that West Berkshire Council has been investigating the use of this field for many months. Why were Coldash Parish Council not consulted or given advance notice of these plans? Coldash Parish Council have not had a response to any of the concerns that have been raised. They've not received a copy of the feasibility study. Do you think that West Berkshire Council should have a good working relationship with parish councils and how can we improve this? Do you want me to say that one? Um, in retrospect, you're probably absolutely right, Councillor Marsh. Um, but this was at one of a number of sites that we looked at as potential um, and uh, locations for uh, grass pitches. And it's not the only one, though I think there will be three or four more to come in the, across the district. Um, it's, I think most people probably don't want to raise hairs unnecessarily. Um, so that was the purpose, really, of this consultation, which was to, to kick things off by just saying this is one that we've we've alighted on as being a strong possibility, and we'll take it from there. It's it's by no means trying to upset uh, the parish council, who, and we welcome the relationship we have with you. Thank you. Um, Paul Wilson has said, is the current site's open space large enough for a pitch, and if not, how much of the trees will need to be removed? Who would like to answer that one, please? Go on, James. I, yeah. I can kick it off if you want. Yeah, um, yes, it is. Yeah, we've uh, we've um, undertaken the necessary um, design work to demonstrate that a full sized pitch can be accommodated on that site. Um, so there's no issues from from that perspective. Uh, in terms of tree loss, there might be some minor tree loss, but they would uh, obviously be. Um, Part of a tree survey that will be undertaken and any loss would have to be justified as we've sort of previously discussed um, through biodiversity and through ecology uh, reports and studies. Thank you. Um, we have someone who's asked why was this an online survey only? So I can answer part of that and then I'll move across to what the the um, department decided and how they wanted to consult with this. Um, we have used various forms of media to try and um, engage with 
residents we've also gone to our radio partners and there are um, paper surveys available it doesn't have to be done just online but I think um, it's better to speak to the service themselves and how they came to the decision to do an online survey who would like to, to answer that well I, I can sort of just, just give an initial comment I just think mm -hmm. you know West Barcher's on online surveys previously with regard to leisure related projects have been very effective um, you know we've had good responses and it's been uh, an effective media for communicating um, so so that's why we chose it um, you know the community and, co and consultation team that we work with have been very good um, on on leisure projects in terms of you know raising awareness and so it just it just seemed to us that that was a, a, a really good mechanism for doing it um, I think it has been supported by some materials that have been distributed, you know, to public locations and posters, etc. Um, but as I said, you know, no consultation is perfect. Uh, I think it's been advertised in the media as well. Um, and we're always looking to sort of improve. So any, any feedback where people have got recommendations as to how we can enhance and, and reach a wider audience, we're always happy to receive that feedback uh, and act on it. Thank you. Um, we have a, a question from Paula. How is this plan impacted by the nutrient neutral and directive? Um, who would who would be dealing with that, Paul? Would that be you? Uh, it's it's not I, I, an area in, in my um, a, a area of expertise, but um, I again that's that's it, if I understand the question properly, then that is something which would have to be um, subject to consultation at a planning um, application stage. But I, 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 it's not it's not my area of expertise. Thank you, Stuart. Asks what are the indicative costs of this project as part of feasibility? Oh, I'm sorry, sorry Howard, apologies. I, I'm again by no means an expert, but I have a little information on this um, because it's not actually anything that's going to be lived in or indeed a structure as such in terms of a property, uh, the director I don't think has any impact, but clearly I'd like to take advice more from our uh, experts on the planning and um, the planning side, basically. Thank but you. I don't think has an impact. Um, so Stuart has asked, what are the indicative costs of this project as part of the feasibility study? Okay. Uh, James, I'm happy to sort of take, uh, you know, indicative figures from yourself on this to, to, to the audience. Uh, I don't actually have them to hand, to be honest. That sounds like it's been uh, pre-stage, but I don't have them to hand. I can provide them, and we can and we can put them up on the uh, on the website or in response to the question. No problem at all on that side. Thank you. Um, Paul has come back to say half of the field is in NTC, so please let them have the FS. I'm not that quite sure what NTC or FS is. I, th I think that might be is it feasibility is study. Town Council right. and yeah. feasibility study. Yeah, it's a feasibility study. It's, it's 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 because it's shared between two words. Okay, we can do that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And finally, Ed has said, "What is the timetable for the council's next steps? Will the consultation feedback be discussed at a West Berkshire County Committee meeting? And if so, when?" I can take a little bit on that and then perhaps Howard, I mean, basically the results of this will be fed into um, what is a, a, the authorities culture and leisure programming board. And that will be considered also along with the sort of the, the stagey review of the playing pitch strategy, which is where we've collated all of the uh, and updated all of the uh, information on supply and demand across the authority. So. I think um, you know it, it, it's weeks rather than months um, uh, on which we'll be able to collate that uh, and get that initially to our culture and leisure program board, and then after that, I think you know it'd be for Howard and, and others to determine the, the route thereafter. Thank you. Uh, we have a couple more questions that have been entered into the section. If anyone else does want to add a question in, please do so. We are going to finish. Um, probably at six o'clock. So if, if you do have something that you want to ask, please pop it in there now. Um, Paula, it's, it's more abbreviations. I, I apologise if I don't know what they mean, not being in the leisure industry. It says, it is the NE, NND catchment for Lambourne, sourced to Newbury, and involves toilets and new drainage. I think NND is Nutrient Neutrality Directive. Right, okay. And NE, I think, is... Um... That nat nature England, what it's called. Um, the, the, the toilet facility is so minimal 
I don't think this has an impact, Paula. Thank I you mean, for explaining it, that. I think it's it, useful it, for the wider it, audience. It, it is absolutely time. We're talking, I think, probably about two laboratories of the guest pool, no more than that. Yeah. Which will be on any in any event, um, minimal use of water. Um, I, I just don't think this is an issue for, for nutrient neutrality. And Paul, you have your hand up. I just wanted to, I, I, if I may come back to a question about something, I, I miss, I miss a watch asked a question about can you define a uh, tree loss? And I thought it was worthwhile. I think it's worthwhile coming back to that to that point because it's, it's, a, it's trees are a, another element of my, um, a, in my portfolio and, 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 and I am obviously concerned about, about any tree loss or, or, on any project. Uh, it doesn't matter this one or, or, or any other. Um, I, I'm satisfied, um, Mr. Watts, having looked at the, um, the, the indicative um, uh, layout of the pitch, that actually, if you look at that, there is a minimal impact on, on the trees um, there. I, we can't define um, what that minimal or um, uh, otherwise impact and that small impact on the trees until we've got a, a tree um, a, a tree survey carried out. But what I can what, what we can certainly see is that looking at the indicative plan, there is likely to be very little impact. I, I where the where there may be impacts is in relation to access for heavy vehicles because there may have to be, be be trees which have to be trimmed back to allow vehicles onto the site. Um, there certainly may need to be um, some some I uh, uh, scrub removal, and that by scrub I mean small trees and shrubs uh, if we have to reposition the playground. But generally speaking, it's not. I, I am not. I, I, you know, looking at it, I'm not that concerned about the impact on trees. Thank you, James. Yeah, just two quick points. Sorry, uh, one is that uh, I just wanted to share those figures. I found them now. So it's uh, two seventy to three hundred thousand for the construction costs. But just bearing in mind that we're at feasibility stage here, so these are indicative costs. Um, and then the other point was just to pick up on Councillor Wollaston's uh, point about nutrient neutrality. I'm by no means an expert in this, so I'm not trying to claim that. But I, I think he's absolutely right in as much as the issue is really to do with significant development on site so whether that be housing retail or other major developments that were going to have an impact on the nutrient um value of the land if you like underneath and how that gets into the water system so uh, a small toilet block and certainly sports and recreation surface development is going to have no impact on that at all or very very minor impact if any so I think relating to what you've just said there, James, Joe McIntyre said, will the council commit to taking any advice given by Natural England in respect of the proposal? Uh, yeah, from a planning perspective, whatever the consultees uh, respond with, we would we would react to. Yes, absolutely. So in the build up to submission of an application, we'd look to consult with all the relevant bodies anyway, Natural England, the Environment and Health Agency, all the, the correct consultees at the local authority. And any feedback would be uh, dealt with and, and uh, obviously addressed up front and then through the application process. Similarly, if there, if there was a response that needed to be um, taken into account, we'd, we'd do so. Thank you. Paul, is your hand a legacy hand? Sorry, it's a legacy hand. My apologies. That's fine. OK, we have an, um, an attendee who's asked, the noise concern seems to be answered in regards to foul or racial language, but the real concern of the noise pollution in general, I think, needs to be more carefully considered in a residential area. There was a small family gathering with games at the weekend, which was very noisy, an indication of what's to come. Who would like to answer the noise question? Paul, I think, you is that you? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I am I, I happy to do that. And I, 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 I can only say that we, your point is noted, um, I, I, to be fair. I, the, yes, if you've gone from, a, from a, um, a, a, an area of land which is, has minimal use to one which we're, where we're promoting use, then of course there will be increased noise. Um, but I go back to my point that um, we need to be providing open spaces which are meaningful to the general public and family gatherings and so on, as much as they may be a, a hindrance, um, that's that's exactly what, what open spaces are for. Um, uh, and again, that, you know, we, 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 post lockdown, people are going to, to to make more demands and how they use and, and, and what's provided on these open spaces for the, for for, the, for, for their um, their recreational use. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, as much as I recognise the the, the 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 noise issue. Um, I, I don't, it's, it's not, again, something that comes across my desk elsewhere Thank in you. very similar circumstances. 
Um, Paul's asked us about the online survey results. As the survey is still open, we don't have the results of that to share with you yet. Um, so as soon as we do, we will, and they'll be published on the consultation hub. Um, Councillor Risham Marsh has said, can we please see the indicative layout? Apparently they've been told that there wasn't one. When CAPC asked, we were told there wasn't one. I believe that's the parish council. I think, I think yeah, there's a... Sorry, Sorry go on. No, go on, Paul. There is an indicative layout. We, that, that, was, that was produced as part of the consultation. Yeah, there is, there is an indicative layout. It can, it can be shown, but I think it's important that people realise that that indicative layout has not yet been informed by this consultation and would still need to take into account the results of the, the sort of playing pitch strategy um, and the consultation with clubs. So, as I said, the indicative layout would show that there is the capability of putting an adult size pitch there, but the eventual markings for that site, et cetera, I think would be informed um, at a later date. And as I said, we may well therefore go for smaller pitches um, in terms of the markings and the full adult one. Um, thank you for that. We've had um, another attendee ask um, why this is a one way exercise with no chance for residents to debate with the panel. Does the panel think that this is acceptable? I can answer that, but I'm happy to pass it over. So the reason that we created the webinar was because we'd had so many questions. We wanted a chance to answer the questions. This is a consultation at this point, it's not gone for debate because we're at the stage where we're still trying to find out what everybody thinks. Um, we're a bit too, it's a bit too soon really, but we realized with so many questions, we wanted to try and answer them. And we thought by doing it in person, we would do it in an open way and it would allow you to interact with us and ask more questions if you were there. This would then be recorded and posted onto the website and people could view it if they were concerned in any way. Hopefully some of the answers to their questions would be contained within this webinar and it might put their mind at rest. But we are not at a stage, as I understand it, where any debate would be necessary because we're in consultation. If anyone would like to add anything, please do. Okay. Um, Lee McDougall says the last online consultation for the picture at Monks Lane did not share the detailed results or comments, took a freedom of information request to get the information. Will all the results be shared this time? Yeah. Paul? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. The results of the consultation will be shown in full. Um, yeah, that, that's what we're going to do. Okay, thank you. Um, Paula has said the surface water drainage will be critical as the area has high flood risk. Has any work been done on this yet? I can tell Owen if you want. Um, the uh, simple fact is no. Uh, well, very minor stuff because uh, we're at a very early stage in the process. So we are aware of the situation and we are aware that that will need to be investigated in full. And for something like this, taking into account the, um, the sports surface drainage as well, a sustainable drainage solution will be required. So we're fully aware of that. And again, through the planning process, that would be designed in conjunction with the relevant departments, consulted upon and, uh, and put into place. Thank you. Um, there's another question about the oil pipe traversing the field. I think we mentioned that earlier. Um, yeah. Is that something that will be looked at in the future or is that, have you got an answer about the oil pipe? I mean, I can just I, I briefly mention about the, the, the oil pipeline and then James is, is, is more of an expert than me, but um, the, 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 I can assure you the oil pipeline agency um, have very, very strict guidelines as to what can, can and can't um, occur over their apparatus. Um, and we've had uh, discussions, I've, I've had discussions with them on other projects um, and they, they um, have, a, have a watching brief at any, at any stage and, and they, they, they also offer uh, advice um, to to any anyone uh, who who wants to work across the top of their apparatus, so they're fully engaged in this process, and they, and, and they simply won't allow anything to happen which compromises that that facility. James, thank you. Yeah, exactly as you said there, Paul. We've had pre preliminary discussions with the oil pipeline company. Um, they have no objection in principle to the proposed use. And as uh, Paul said, they've got very stringent ways of working, which would all have to be adhered to uh, as and when any construction would take place. Um, so, yeah, it's it's something that's already been engaged with and uh, would be again through the, through the process. Thank you. Um, I'm going to close the questions and answers now. There are some more still in there that are unanswered. Um, all of the questions that have been asked, we will, we will address and we'll put them on the website. Um, 
I just want to thank everybody for joining this evening. It's opened up the discussion. The information is out there and we hopefully will address any concerns that you have, but we are still in a consultation period. I just wanted to make that clear before I leave. Um, have any of our panelists got anything finally that they'd like to add? Then uh, I'd like to thank you all for joining us this evening. Howard, would you like to close the webinar for me, please? Yeah, I thank you. I'd like, I'm very delighted to see we've had 19 attendees of this, so there's clearly some good public interest, uh, and we welcome the comments, and we will listen to them, and uh, if we take this thing further forward, we'll pay attention to the comments that have been made, and thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. I hope everybody has a good evening, and we will post up the recording of this webinar for you all to enjoy again on the website. Thank you, for, thank, you. thank you for joining us this evening. Good night. Thanks,